This is Unit 12, Lesson 2, and so I'm provided that the sine of A is equal to 3 fifths, the cosine of B is equal to negative 4 fifths, and then I have this following information. So notice that it says that A is going to be positive, so I'm going to start by writing all star trig class. I know if the sine of A is positive, it's going to be in quadrants 1 or 2. So I know that A is either going to be in quadrants 1 or in quadrant 2. Now when I come over here, it says that A is between, it says A is greater than 90 degrees or pi over 2, and A is less than 180 degrees or pi. So here's pi over 2, here's pi, and it says again it is greater than pi over 2, and it is less than pi. So it's going to be in quadrant number 3. So I'm going to start by drawing a picture here, and I will share with you that when I graded the unit 10 exams, a lot of students made the following mistake. They would make a point here, but instead of going and drawing this back to the horizontal axis, many students would draw it back to the vertical axis axis. We always go back to the horizontal axis no matter what quadrant we are working in. Okay, so this is my interior angle that I'm talking about. It says the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So this is 3 fifths. And we could use the, um, the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared in order to achieve this length. I know by memorizing this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. But again, if you did not know that, we could replace a or b with 3 and 5 would go be replaced with a C. We'd end up with A squared equals 16. And since we're talking about a length, it's only going to be the positive. All right, so let's get started here. Take your calculator. We're talking about degrees. So the very first thing I want you to do is to go into mode, make sure you're in degrees, and press enter. Am I talking loud enough for the two of you to hear? Okay. Now, how do I figure this out? We have many choices here. I'm personally going to do the inverse sine. So I'm going to do the inverse sine of this angle is equal to 3 fifths. So inverse sine, inverse sine, you've got to find an inverse sine of 3 divided by 5. And that's what we have for an answer. But we've got to make sure we know what that means. That means that this angle right here this angle right here is 36.86. That's what that particular angle is. What we want to be able to figure out if I grab a different color is we want to know from here up to this point. So what I want to do is I want to take 180 degrees minus whatever I achieved here. So I'm going to grab my calculator and go 180 minus this exact answer. To get that, I'll hit second. An answer is like copying and pasting. And this is my answer, 143.13. So this is approximately 143.13. Okay, let's look now at angle B. Okay, so angle B tells us we have an answer that's negative. Okay, so where are cosines negative? Co cosines are positive in 1 and 4, so this is going to occur in 2 or 3. Now, how do I know if it's going to be in 2 or if it's going to be in 3 for angle B? Well, it says that B has to be greater than pi, and it has to be less than 3 pi over 2. So it's going to be angle 3, sorry, it's going to be quadrant 3. And this is an example again, we always go back to the horizontal axis. Okay, so this is the angle we're talking about, and we know cosine means adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is 4, and hypotenuse is 5. And again, we can see that a right triangle is 3, 4, 5, so this is missing side 3. I do want to add that in the past, I see a lot of students that are wondering, what do I do with this negative sign? They often try to associate it with the 4 or with the 5. This is just helping us to determine which quadrant it lies in. The actual lengths, which we'll use to represent, uh, to which we'll use to represent the ratios. Happy Thursday, Bruce. Please pardon this. All right. So, sorry about that with the announcements here. So we have this, and I'm going to go with what is angle B. So I could use any one of the primary trig functions to do this easily. So I'm going to choose to do to figure out this angle. I think I'm going to choose to use, I mean, it doesn't matter which one we use, but I think I'm going to use the sine. So I'm going to go opposite over, opposite over the hypotenuse. So 
whenever we want to figure out the angle, we're going to do the inverse. So inverse of 3 fifths. Don't have a positive or negative, just inverse of 3 fifths. And that's going to give me this angle. So we have a reference angle of 36.86. So that's this angle here, which is 36.86. But I want to be able to go from what we think of as a starting line all the way here. So I need to take 180 and add it to that additional reference angle. And so I'm going to take 180 and add it to that reference angle to get 216.86. Approximately 216.86. Now this is just add the two angles. I don't want you to get confused with do we need to go to the sum and difference formulas. We are not working specifically with sine or cosine. We're just asked to add the two angles. So I want to add these two angles up above. So 143. 13 plus 216.86. So I'm going to take this previous answer and add to it 143.13, and I end up with this should be 360. Okay, so remember, as just a, a quick reminder, when we go through these primary trig functions for angle A and angle B, we are just going to list two sides of the right triangle. We're making a ratio based on what each of these trig functions represents. Like, for instance, opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent. So let's get started here. So from angle A, which is right here, it would be 3 fifths. I'm going to come back and do the signs later on. The cosine would be, cosine would be 4 fifths. Again, I'll do the signs later on. And the tangent would be 3 fourths. Okay, now in this quadrant, only the sign is positive. So negative and negative. Let's go on to angle B. Angle B is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, which is 3 fifths. Cosine is 4 fifths. And tangent is 3 fourths. In quadrant number three, in quadrant number three, only tangent is positive. So sine and cosine are negative. Let's go down below. Okay, let's now write this out. So A plus B. So the sine of A plus B, when we locate our reference sheet, is going to be sine A, cosine B, plus cosine A, and sine B. I'm going to write that down. I have not memorized that. Sine A times cosine B plus cosine A times sine B. And now I'm just going to refer up above to the ratios that I've already created. So what is the sine of A? It is positive 3 fifths. What's the cosine of B? It is negative 4 fifths plus cosine A, negative 4 fifths, times sine B, negative 3 fifths. Okay, I'm multiplying here. I have a positive times a negative, so I have a negative 12 over 25. Just multiplying straight across for the numerator and the denominator. Here I have two negatives, which makes a positive, and again I have 12 over 25. These are additive inverses. That means the same value, just opposite signs, which equals zero when you combine them. Okay, let's go look right now, and let's look at the cosine of A plus B. Cosine of A plus B, so I'm going to go back to this sheet. Cosine of A plus B, and I'm going to write down the formula. So I have, let's see, cosine of A times cosine of B minus the sine of A times the sine, oops, sorry, sine of B. And I'm going to go right back, making my parentheses. Okay, cosine of A, bless you, is negative 4 fifths. Cosine of B is a positive, oops, sorry, is a negative 4 fifths again. I have subtraction sign, and I have the sine of A is 3 fifths, and the sine of B is a negative 3 fifths. Two negatives make a positive. I have 16 over 25, and this is really like a negative 3 times negative 3. Two negatives make a positive, 9 over 25. When you have the same denominator, you keep the denominator, and we're going to add the numerator in this case. 16 plus 9 is 25 simplifies to 1. Let's look at the tangent of a plus b. Tangent of a plus b, I'm going to write down this formula. So I have tangent a plus tangent b all over 1 minus tangent a times tangent b. Okay, so here we go. Tangent of a, tangent a is negative 3 fourths plus tangent b is going to be 
um, positive three-fourths. Now, I'm not actually even going to take time to do the rest of the bottom. These are additive inverses. Negative three-fourths plus a positive three-fourths is zero, and zero divided by any number is simply zero. Let's take a look right now at applying the sum in different formulas to specific angles. Remember when we do this, we are going to rely on our common angles, which is 30, 45, 60, 90, okay? Those angles. So how can I create an angle of 75 using those common angles? I'm able to do that, breaking 75 up into 30 plus 45, or 45 plus 30, however you want to write it. Now I'm going to see that I'm adding two angles, and I have sine, so I'm going to come back here and I'm going to write this down. But when I write this down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to note that this is angle A and this is angle B. So instead of just writing sine A, I'm going to write sine of 30 times cosine of B. So cosine of 45 plus the next should be cosine of A, which is cosine of 30 times sine of B, which is sine of 45. Now, yes, we could rely on this. We could rely on this. But I want us to get to a point where we are starting to think about this in terms of our first quadrant and how it applies. So I'm going to make these little marks here because we're not going to be given the unit circle on our AP exam. So I'm going to go through and do this really quickly. Okay, so here we go. Sine of 30. Well, here's 30. I know sine is the second number, so this is 1 half. Cosine of 45. Cosine is the first, which is radical 2 over 2. Cosine of 30, here's 30 degrees, cosine is the first, radical 3 over 2, and sine of 45, sine of 45 is radical 2 over 2. So I'm going to multiply to get 1 times radical to 2 is radical 2 over 4, plus, if you didn't know this, radical 3 times radical 2 is just 3 times 2, or radical 6 over 4. Now because we have a common denominator, we want to take it one step further. And on top, we'll have radical 2 plus radical 6. I cannot combine these. This is not equivalent to the square root of 8. So this is my final answer for number 3. Let's look at number 4. How can I achieve 15 degrees using these common angles? I'm going to do the cosine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. Am I moving too fast? Okay. Now I'm going to go, okay, cosines and we're subtracting, so I'm going to write this down. But as I write this down, it's very important to know this is my A and this is my B. Okay, so I'm going to do cosine A times cosine B first. Got it. Cosine of 45 times the cosine of 30. That's my first move. Then I'm going to add sine A times sine B sine A times sine B. What is the cosine of 45? The cosine is radical 2 over 2. What is the cosine of 30? It is radical 3 over 2 plus. What is the sine of 45? The sine of 45 is radical 2 over 2. And what is the sine of 30 degrees? The sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. So just like I was able to take radical 3 times radical 2 to get radical 6, I'll do the same thing here. I have the square root of 6 over 4 plus the square root of 2 over 4, and I end up with the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. <coughs> Students in my class are working on this. While I work on it, I'm not going to walk through the process verbally. I'm going to let them, but I do want to add it. It wouldn't make a difference whether you said 45 plus 60 or 60 plus 45.
okay, without using my reference. So without going back here and cheating to figure out what this should be. And by the way, just a quick quick note here. If you were not in class yesterday and you picked this up, we did make some changes. Here. <coughs> Remember, it's supposed to be negative tangents. So if you have not changed up, please do so. What I'm circling are all the tangent measurements. Okay, so just adding to that too. If you did not add these in, please do so. Okay, but let's pretend I don't have this because this is not going to be provided to me on my AP exam. Um, well, the tangent of 45 is the easiest one. When you take, and I'm going to zoom out here so you can see. When you take and you take the sine divided by the cosine, because that's tangent, sine divided by cosine, and they're the same values, you get 1. So I know these are going to be replaced with 1. But what about the tangent of 60? Well, here's 60. I'm going to take the sine and divide it by the cosine. Sine divided by cosine. So sine multiplied by its reciprocal, and I get radical 3. I know that the tangent and quadrant 1 are going to be positive. So here we go. This is radical 3, and this is 1. Okay, so the tangent of 60 is going to be radical 3 plus 1. On the bottom, I'm going to have 1 subtract radical 3 times 1. And this is good. This, this works, um, but it's not in proper form. So, again, this works, but this is not in proper form. Why is this not in proper form? It's not in proper form because we have a radical on the bottom. So if you remember, what we do is we multiply it by the conjugate. So I'm going to do that right now. And before I do this, I recognize that 1 plus the square root of 3 and 1 minus the square root of 3 on the bottom. Oh, I meant to put plus here. This should be a plus and a plus. Sorry. When I multiply the bottoms, I keep the left. I don't have to do the outside the inside, and here I have minus the square root of 9. So 1 minus 3 is negative 2 in the denominator. I have negative 2 in the denominator. Now I'm going to have to come off to the side and foil this up above. So here we go. Front is 1. Outside is radical 3. Inside is radical 3. And last is the square root of 9, which is just simply 3. 1 plus 3 is I have 4 plus 2 radical 3. That's the numerator when I combine. Remember, in the bottom I have a negative 2. This negative 2 needs to be shared with the left, and it needs to be shared with the right. 4 divided by negative 2 is simply negative 2. And 2 divided by negative 2 is simply <coughs> negative 1. This is my final answer. And it doesn't matter if the negative radical 3 goes in front and the negative 2 goes in back or vice versa.